And here we go. We advance to the next level, or the next stage, and that is reach a population of 500. It's great. We're a little hamlet now, and we've got some new features such as taxes, loans, some new services of garbage, healthcare, and education, and some new buildings of the elementary school, the medical clinic, and the landfill site. So we just close this. We'll start to get a whole bunch of new problems arising in our little city. Okay, so the new problems would be the garbage. There's no garbage being picked up. And what we do with this is we just click on this button here, which is garbage, and that already automatically brings us to this garbage dump or landfill site here. And you can usually want to place this away from the residential zone. Because think about it, you want one, you would not want to live next to a landfill zone or a, res a garbage dump. So place it in near the industry because they don't care. And the other thing you want is healthcare. Now healthcare is quite expensive to run, as this is, costs 400 a week. We're getting quite a lot a week, so that's not a problem. You want to place this roughly in the middle of all your residential, as that way it keeps as many people as possible healthy. For example, I know I'm going to expand my residential out this way towards the wind turbines, so I'm going to place it here for now. And this way, all these people are happy and they'll keep healthy. The other thing we've unlocked is schools. And this is the same kind of principle, we want it in the centre to get the best coverage. And I'm going to place that next to the medical centre. And there we go. That's going to cost us a bit per uh, week, but that should hopefully recover soon. And hopefully, with the more educated people we get, we hopefully should advance our industry and move from these factories into offices or even more advanced factories, such as technology, uh, manufacturing, I don't know. I don't know what they make. I haven't got that far yet. But when I do, I'll let you know. So yeah, we can now just admire our town once more as it grows and micromanage all the little problems that come up. Like you can start to see now, we're going to have to expand the residential areas. We've got a little bit of demand creeping up. So we can be on top of that and create another few little grids. But as I said, it's not always the best thing to create grids and it's not always the nicest looking thing to do either. But it is certainly very efficient. And you can't fault it in that respect. Uh, they weren't too happy because I knocked down their house. And I would not be happy if someone knocked down my house. Ooh. As you see, my mistake there. I'm putting industrial in the wrong place. That's why you need to make sure you click on the green before you start placing things down. Okay, so we're going to highlight this whole area as residential. And we'll get people moving in. There you go, immediately. People moving in. And the more people you move in you generally get more access to, or they pay taxes, don't they? So you get more money and more of a budget to work with. Now we're going to build a few new roads down here as well, another block. And what we can do now is get rid of this power line here, as it should link up with that other one, or it will do eventually. So if we just stone all this is residential. There we go. So now... Because we've got a building right next to that power line, we can get rid of this one here. And that's make it look a bit nicer and give us a little bit more space. And that won't affect the electricity problem, no. Okay, that gives us the... Uh, it's already highlighted it for us, but that gives us a little bit more area to work with. And it also shows that in this game, you do a lot of reworking of your city. You can plan it out as much as you want, but you're going to have to change your plans a lot of the time. And look, we're getting a little bit of a problem here. If we pause the game, these places don't have enough electricity. If we go into our electricity, we really do not have enough just from these two wind turbines. So, a simple solution, get another one. There we go. Plonk down. And wind turbines cost us, if we look at this, £80 or €80 Euro books a week. And we could maybe think about getting a coal power plant instead, because that lasts us a long time. However, it does have a lot of noise pollution. Not as much as the wind turbine, but it's got a lot of other pollutions associated with it. Whereas the wind turbine doesn't. It's also a lot more expensive than a wind turbine. But, you know, that's the thing you have to look at. And you want to look at how you want your city to uh, play out. And look, all the power's coming back to the city now. And if you listen closely, you can hear the as the generators come back online. And there we go. It, see, we're getting a lot of money per uh, week now. Because we've got this little residential area here. 
little industry here for them all to work in and everything's going nice and smoothly. What we might start to notice now though is due to the increased amount of people living here, look we've got 963, nearly a thousand people just within, within these eight or so roads. So, and the traffic build up, oh just as I'm talking, so rude. Worthy village, so we've reached a population of 1000, just as I was saying. So this allows us now to unlock more pieces of land to expand upon, like you, well, like we wish we could have in SimCity. This also allows us at the feature of districts, policies, second loan, industry specialisation, services, policies, fire department, police department, unique buildings, forestry specialisation, agriculture specialisation, power usage, water usage, smoke detector uh, distribution, that's for policies, and new buildings, a police station and a firehouse, all of which we will probably use or do our best to use. So as you can see, I'm not really struggling for money just to due to the way that I've planned out my city and I've micromanaged it well so we've not had any major problems but look, well this is a little bit of a major problem, there's not enough water in the city so here we go, one thing we can do have another water tower and if we just click here, look that's going to be a bit of noise pollution which we don't really want so we're going to put the water tower a little bit out of the way and put it back here, we've got a new one so there, that's going to need electrical hookups as well which it has got, but it doesn't have the water pipe hookups. So we're just going to connect it there for a cheap price of 120 bucks. It's all linked to electricity. And there we go. We should have a bit more water now. And as you can see, residential demand is increasing yet again. But before we do that, I'll show you a cool tool that's in this that wasn't in many, if any, other city builders. I've just noticed a few areas aren't covered by water. So I'm just going to bring the pipes up there and down. There we go. They have water now. Is this button here. Districts. So like with any town or city, you have different areas of the city. So you might have a smaller part of the city. Say for I'm from Nottingham and then there's a smaller part called Arnold. And a smaller part called Snenton. And what you can do is highlight a little area like this. A bit like the paintbrush tool again. And if we bring this down like that. Oops bring it down and expand it outwards oh, we want to get the water tower in there as well so it we can be nice and specific if we wanted to we can include this road as it's done quite nicely to follow the roads but we're not going to do that at this point we can name this place so this is uh, name something random to start with but we can call it what we want so we, we can call this grid town as it is very much like a grid. And this whole area is known as Grid Town from now on. And this place is still struggling with electricity. If we look at our electrical hookup, we should be doing okay, but we're just not generating enough. So get another wind turbine in here. And this is a point that we probably want to start looking at getting a coal power station instead, because as we expand, you know, we're going to have to have a ton of wind turbines. And the coal power station is a lot, lot smaller. And already, if you come over to the industrial side of the town, we can see that they're starting to pollute. And they're uh, affecting the ground here. So that's why you don't want to put it near houses. As it really lowers the land value and people aren't particularly happy about that kind of stuff. But from here, we can also expand outwards and do a few new roads like this, we don't want to get rid of the landfill site so we're going to keep that as it is but expand our industrial area to cover all the way up here we don't want to join it to the roundabout though so we're going to join it to here uh, actually no, you know, we will join it to the roundabout because people may want to go onto the roundabout just for fun and here we can zone a bit more industry and settle a bit of demand which hopefully we should do but one thing that we have more of than any is demand for residential but as you're starting to see there's a little bit of traffic build up that's slowing down the city slightly here especially at peak hours 
So something you might want to think about or consider doing is just having another road coming off. Just another way for, say, people all on this side of the town to get off. And maybe you might have another one coming out of here for all the people of this side of the town to come off and so on. You might have one up here. Yeah, you get the idea. But what we're going to do now, make another grid. Bring it out there. Take it all the way along to here. Bring it down. And then link it up in the middle. Then we can zone this whole area. There's a residential. And then when we've got houses moved in, we can get rid of another power line and get a little bit more area. See, we've got a house there already. We can get rid of it. Oh no, well we can't just yet. We need one in here really more than anything. So, now we have a building setting up just nearby. We can get rid of that. Go off the bulldozer tool. And look into our zones. And just fill up a little bit more. And hopefully that should satisfy a little bit more demand for residential. We're also noticing a bit more demand for commercial. So we can extend this high street here. With a few more shops put in. This does slow down traffic and things like that but that's something you just have to deal with and then you fix again later on so yeah as you've noticed fire stations uh, work very similarly to healthcare in the fact that you have to have one pretty central and the coverage is spread outwards but you also want to cover the industrial areas with fire stations so it's usually better to have separate ones and the same for police stations as well the only true thing that we've unlocked now is our ability to look at our economy. And you have your budget panel here, so if you need more electricity, you can increase your budget and I assume generate more electricity. And you can also do that for a lot of other things like your police force, or if you want to crack down on something, just pump money into it and that should fix itself. You can also change your taxes for each kind of area here, so you know, uh, in low in low density residential we can increase or lower taxes for and the same for commercial and the same for industry and as we unlock more different sectors we can do the same thing the other useful thing is loans in this section you can take out a loan which is repayable over different amounts of time like that's a year that's uh, 200 I don't know how many years a few years four or five years and you get different amounts depending on which loan you take out Obviously, the more you take out, the more it costs you. It's usually something that happens you take out this smaller loan within the first few weeks of, you know, setting up your city. You can also look into the income expenses tabs here, which show you everything that you're spending money on, where you're wasting money, for example. Like, we're punching, pumping 390 bucks into electricity at the minute, and we're probably not getting the most out of it. So maybe we want to look at getting in a coal power station and getting rid of these wind turbines they're not horribly efficient. We're also pumping a lot of more money into water due to the fact we have the sewage treatment plant over or sewage treatment pipe over here and two water water what are these called? Water towers. And these are probably quite expensive, but it's a lot easier than having water pumped up from there, which we don't need yet, and brought all the way to the city. So there's different costs and expenses and all that associated with each little thing. This tends to be the general idea of how you set up each each city that you have in this game. You slowly expand, you align yourself to the demand for each commercial, residential and industry, and slowly fill it all up. So, from this point onwards, you tend to just micromanage all different things like this here. It burnt down, so that shows we need a fire station in this area. And these have no water, so we need to fix that as well. So if we can pause the game, that helps stop and uh, that's help that stops uh, the happiness of our citizens decreasing too much. And we can add a water pipe or water system into this area, which will help give all these factories water, obviously. And the other thing we want to do is introduce a fire department into both the industrial district and the residential district. So we can plop 
one there, which gives us good coverage of this district. And we want to be able to plop one in the middle of this town as well, give us a good coverage of this district. So we're going to put one here. And obviously you see the happiness increase. These also cost a fair, lot, a fair bit, so you might want to be wary of how much you actually do spend on this kind of stuff. For example, I don't have enough money to place a de police department in the minute, and you might see crime go up. However, until we get more money to do so, there's nothing we can really do. What we've noticed there is a building that's burnt down, so we just need to demolish this by clicking on the bulldozer tool here, and demolishing and removing that building. That just allows it to be replaced, and helps us a lot. For these places, if you look at this network now, these are not. Uh, if you play, click play, sorry, water should be flowing into these factories, and all well, these are complaining about electricity because again we're running short on it. What we can do is add another one. It costs us how much does it cost us to run? Eighty pounds. So I think this will be the last one we get. Uh, or, well, when we can afford it before we start looking into getting one of these coal power plants. Or maybe we could get a coal power plant, power plant now and just shove it out and close some of these down instead. That might work better. But for now, we're just going to have to keep churning out what we can. We're getting a lot of money per week as well, so it's not like we're struggling for things and it's not like it's going to be long before they can get electricity again. Of course, you want to try and satisfy their needs as soon as you can, but it's not always possible. So they're going to have to wait for a little while until we have the money. Right now. Now we can afford it. Place another windmill in here. And that's probably the last windmill we really want to place in this. We'll probably get one more. But we really want to look at getting a coal power plant at this point. But it all depends on what you want to do as well. Maybe you want to have a city that's completely green. And in that case you won't want to have any industry at all in which case it would be quite difficult but well, the good thing about this is it's quite, it's, it is very balanced so that when you get rid of all this industry here if you decide to you can then drain away all this pollution with trees and different things to make the area nice again so you're never stuck with what happens you can mould and shape your city to how you like there's lots of different little nice features that you can have in this game as well for example with roads there's a nice feature in this where if you hit page up or down when you're building them you can elevate them which is really good for building over things say if I wanted a bypass all over this city or all over this town I could have this big fat bridge built which is really nice and I think it just looks really cool as well and if you hit page down that lowers it fortunately we can't go underground because that would be really nice as well I'm not sure if you can do it through hills uh, around I haven't got or witnessed any hills yet or come across them. And as you can see, if you put it over water like that, you can get a really nice bridge, which to me just looks amazing. And I can't wait to be able to. Oh, look at that. Zooming in looks so nice. And if you look on the cinematic mode, so you can get like a really nice view of the, of the bridge there. And then that's like your postcard view. You know, you can print screen that and decorate it how you want. And oh, you can also look back over your city that you've created. I hope we can look back over it now from the wind turbines and look at everything that we've built. Isn't it pretty? And of course, this isn't the prettiest or most efficient or the nicest way of doing things, but it's a way that I like. And there we go. We've reached a population of 1,500 and there's unlocked some more things like decorations for parks and more policies that we can enact and a high school. So, yeah. This has been City Skyline. If you enjoyed this, then please like, comment, and subscribe. And anything that you do is really appreciated. And I'll just go in this mode. Oh, look how nice it is. It's a really nice looking game. If you want to look, pick this up on Steam, it's a really good price. I think it's £23, saying it only came out two days ago. I think that's just amazing. And it is the best city builder out there. But yeah. It is for exactly what you want to do. And I hope you found this guide or me talking to you entertaining or the guide useful or whatever you do this for. It fills some time in your day. Whatever. 
and hopefully I'll see you soon.